you. I think that's good. Okay, let's begin. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ariana, otherwise known as the Food and Mood Nutritionist, and I am a registered associate nutritionist living in London. So today I thought I would sit down and have a bit of a chatty video and discuss all of the things that I felt really benefited me when I was studying and also the things that I didn't do that I know would benefit me now, now that I'm further advanced in my career. So this is mainly geared towards people who are studying or thinking of studying nutrition or if you know someone who's studying nutrition as well. So a little bit of background, I studied nutrition at the University of Leeds. I graduated in 2019 so I've been a registered associate nutritionist for nearly two years now and I had the best time at Leeds. It was exceptional both academically and also socially. If you are thinking of studying nutrition, definitely, 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 definitely apply to Leeds because it's so much fun. Just before we get started, I just want to quickly mention there is a group on Instagram called The Nutri Crowd, which I founded back in June of 2020. And what we do on there is we share different stories in nutrition and dietetics. We do takeovers, so people show a day in their lives. We also do a lot of study and career advice there. And what else do we do? We do lots over there. <laughs> but we basically focus on like tips and tricks to excel in the field of nutrition and dietetics and yeah it's a really really great platform so definitely go check it out if you want to okay so now on to the tips that i have so if you're a student hear me out on these because they will benefit you when you are studying nutrition okay my tip number one is to stick with it now this tip might seem a little strange but again hear me out so the first and second year of university us nutrition students were pulled together with the food science students i know for every university this isn't the same and some universities only do food science or some universities only do nutrition but in my university's case we were pulled together with the food science students for the first and second year now I don't know why you decided to study nutrition, but for me personally, it was because I was so interested in how diet can influence disease progression and the prevention management of disease and how it can make you feel better and all of those kind of biological things. Whereas food science was not that. <laughs> food science was like chemistry and physics. And I found it really, really tough. And at the beginning of university, we were dropping like flies. Um, a lot of people were deciding this isn't for me, this isn't what I want to do, this isn't why I decided to choose nutrition. So the reason why I say stick with it is because in my final year, so my third year at university, we scaled down. It was really, really nutrition based. It was exactly what I was hoping for. I'm not saying obviously everything that we learned in the food science areas was not beneficial. It definitely was. And things like microbiology and food safety, you need to know as a nutritionist. But I was always interested in physiology and biology. So I I did struggle a little bit there. If your university does that, please stick with it because you will absolutely love your final year and it's exactly why you chose to study nutrition. My tip number two is that you don't need to buy books. Now, obviously this differs from university to university, but in my case at Leeds, we didn't need them, like at all. I remember before I started my degree, we were sent like a huge list of books and they're like, well, we recommend you to buy these and these. And I held off and no one bought books or at least I don't think anyone bought books and I didn't need a book throughout my whole my whole time at university so I just mainly use the library and also online literature is amazing like PubMed and stuff definitely hold off on the book and wait and see what everyone else is doing around you or another tip I would give is buy secondhand go on your uni page or your Facebook page post and see if anyone's selling books because they are so so expensive and it's not worth it if you don't need them tip number three is keep your notes organized. I wish I'd done this better because wow, when it came to my exams, I had so much information that I had to put into different areas and stuff and organize my notes. And it, had I just done it from the beginning, it would have been so much easier. <laughs> um, nutrition is such a dense subject, as I said, and it was really, really hard to keep everything really organized. So what I would recommend is separate things by module and also the subjects that the topic is on. That way you can identify what areas you're weaker in or that you need more vision in and you have all your notes set out and it's so so important when it comes to exam time because you're stressed anyway there's pressure and it's so nice knowing that you have everything set out for you already neat and organized and you're ready to go my tip number four is recording your notes when i was in lectures the lecturer would have the presentation up on the big board up in the front and then we would also get sent the presentation so what i would do is i would have the presentation on one side of my screen on my laptop and also the word document on the other side and when you're in a lecturer they speak so 
so so quickly a thousand miles per hour so sometimes you can get lost or they say something that's really important and they skip to the next slide so this is a really good tactic to not miss any crucial information you have your powerpoint on the left if your lecturer changes to the next slide then you can just take a screenshot of that slide pop it into your word document and then you have that slide to refer back to watch a lecture on lecture catcher and then you can sort out your notes and if i can find an example of my uni notes i will pop them here so you can have a little gander I don't know if I have done that but yeah <laughs> and then also to do with recording notes or writing notes is your notes will be messy when you first do them and I know this can be time consuming or something that you might not want to do right after a lecture but go back to your notes that you've, you've written the same day and fix them make them make sense that way you don't have to do it when it comes to exam time I really really wish I had done that more okay on to tip number five be proactive Oh god, I can't stress how important this one is. If you don't understand something in your lecture or anything that is in that subject or module, speak to your lecturer because they are there ultimately to help you. Shoot them an email, speak to them after the lecture, anything like that. The reason why they're there and the reason why they're employed is to help you and help you excel in your degree. What I would do in lectures is I would just highlight something in red and then anything I didn't understand I would shoot my lecturer an email or I would meet up with them and we would go through it so I could clearly understand and also ask your peers. Your peers are there as well. Some people understand different areas of nutrition more than others and you can just discuss things and go through things to make sure you clearly understand. Tip number we're going for six now, six, <laughs> is to start an Instagram and be consistent with it. My gosh, I really, really wish I did this. I first started an Instagram when I was like 15, I think, and it was like Ariana Eats, something, something like that. But I never was consistent with it. And then in my second year, I started The Wellness Student, which I was initially known for on Instagram or social media for. And I literally posted maybe like five times throughout my degree. And I kind of kick myself now because social media nowadays is an amazing, amazing platform to connect with others in the same fields, as I said before, but also to learn so much. I have learned so, so much since I've been consistent with it. I've been able to meet people this year and it's also a really really good way to show your learning as well so even though you're not a registered nutritionist at that point you can always just share the information that you've learned that's a really great way to revise as well if you can put in the extra time to do that okay tip number seven <laughs> is to take every every opportunity you can whilst at uni so anything such as volunteering or like asking your tutors and module leaders to partake in any research that they're doing anything voluntary voluntary anything voluntary that you can do to further your cv gain some experience in different areas do it take the opportunity because what you'll realize when you are a graduate is that it is so so hard to get experience and i feel like sometimes there's more volunteering opportunities for, for students or geared towards students so use that extra time that you have I mean university it can be very busy but you also have a lot of free time and use that free time to to build up your CV gain some experience and like anything to do with food such as like volunteering at the food bank volunteering at the hospital as a mealtime assistant things like that really really make you stand out to employers and it separates you from the rest because you yourself have used that personal free time that you have to further your experience and employers are really really appreciative when you do those kind of things so use that time wisely and gain some experience while you can okay and my last tip tip number eight <laughs> is to stay in touch with your lecturers tutors module leaders anyone like that anyone at the university who works in nutrition build a relationship with them because this will be really really valuable when it comes to when you start applying for other things or say you're doing a master's like me and you need a reference you want someone that knows you personally who knows how motivated you are how engaged you were and how enthusiastic you were as well they can vouch for you and and provide a really good reference i think i've realized the importance of this this year because i'm applying to my master's in dietetics i ended up using my dissertation tutor as a reference but i wish i had done this more and stayed in touch with my other lecturers my other lecturers in the modules that I've really thrived in make sure that you keep in touch after you graduate because you may even be able to find jobs through them or partake in research projects that they're doing and it's a really good tip as well if you are thinking of applying to a master's in dietetics like a lot of us have 
Okay, and that concludes my tips. I think just the most important thing about studying nutrition is just be proactive. And as I said, take every opportunity you can to further your experience and build up your CV. It is very competitive. Nutrition is a very competitive area and there is a lot of us, it's very saturated. So anything that you can do, especially when you are studying and you have more free time than you would when you're working, will make you stand up from the rest to employers and they really, really value any kind of experience that you used during your study time. Now, my next video will be all about what are the steps that you take after you graduate to become a registered nutritionist. I would have really, really appreciated a video like this explaining all the certain steps that you take because I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> at all. So keep your eyes peeled, make sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, connect and follow the Nutri Crowd if you're interested in finding out a bit more about studying nutrition or dietetics. And if you have any questions, please pop them below or DM me and I will be in touch. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. And it goes a little yeah. something like...